Peace Hall today, giving support to this uh, ceremony and making sure that we can actually take it can actually take place. I know it's been a long time coming for you. Can I call you Dory? <laughs> yes, please. Dory, it's been a long time coming for you. We've been waiting for this. We have been waiting and hoping for a time when these COVID restrictions perhaps fell away and we would be able to have uh, the kind of ceremony that, that we would all want with many friends and family to be present. But sadly, that isn't possible. So here we are today uh, to make this presentation to you. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen to actually make this presentation. Before I do so, I'm going to ask uh, my Deputy Lieutenant uh, Violet Hancock to uh, read the citation. Before I do, uh, I think you possibly are unaware we have a slight surprise for you that Violet uh, will explain in a moment or two. Violet, would you please explain why you're here today, especially looking after me and uh, making the uh, reading the citation uh, for the full door? Yeah, well, thank you, thank you, Lord Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, honoured guest. It is an honour to be here today, and as the Lord Lieutenant said, the surprise is that my name is Lubitsa, which will give you a hint. Oh, <laughs> I too was born in Yugoslavia. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, I think it's it, we were born at slightly different times in history, but it is an example to me of how life's tribulations, you just don't know where you're going to end up, do you? And all the things that you go through, bring us to this very joyful moment to be presenting you with the uh, British Empire Medal. So I'm very happy to be in the United Kingdom today. Well, thank you very much. All the good things are worth waiting for. So this <laughs> is for me just absolutely amazing. Let, me, let me read your citation yes, for you. <laughs> the Dorit Oliver Wolf has been speaking in schools and other organizations about her experience during the Holocaust for well over a decade. She regularly addresses community groups, religious organizations, and local authorities, sharing the story of what happened to her family during the Holocaust. Her dedication to Holocaust education and remembrance is unstinting. In the last five years alone, over 8,000 adults and children have heard her testimony through the Holocaust Education Trust's outreach program. Dorit has addressed international embassies and government departments, not only to mark Holocaust Memorial Day, but also in a bid to educate this country's leaders on where hatred, prejudice, and anti-Semitism can lead. Both the Holocaust Educational Trust and the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust have been grateful to Dorit for her assistance in their aim to educate everyone about the history of the Holocaust, and to raise awareness of this terrible history. She was born in Novi Sad in former Yugoslavia. In 1941, Dorit and her mother fled to Hungary where they traveled from place to place, creating new identities during which time she hid in a cellar for nine months without light or heating. When she was nine years old, the Soviet army liberated Hungary and she was able to come out of hiding. She and her mother returned to Novi Sad and discovered that her father, as well as the rest of her family, had been murdered by the Nazis. She was so weak, she weighed only three stone and could not stand up. After the war, at age 11, she was awarded a scholarship to a music academy in Montenegro. In 1968, she recorded her first record with Philip Santana. To relive such appalling childhood experiences voluntarily and selflessly, takes an extraordinary amount of courage. She continues to speak out about her and her family's experiences in the name of Holocaust education and remembrance. For services to Holocaust education and awareness, Her Majesty is pleased to bestow on Dorit Oliver Wolf the Medal of the Order of the British Empire. And here it is. Wow. <laughs> Just move back slightly. Here it is. Can I touch it? Of course, it's yours. <laughs> Sadly, I can't give it to you, but I can give it to you. Thank you. Wow. This is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Well done. 
can I sleep with it? <laughs> uh, this is just such an honor because, I mean, I am passionate about the talks because I still can. And there are millions of people who have been murdered, they can't talk. So, I mean, I don't need much encouragement to talking because you have to stop me. But this, in this case, it is so important for people to understand that being Jewish is not necessarily that you have been given the sentence to have to die. And there are innocent people. I mean, I didn't even know that I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish by race. And there are other people who are now being persecuted. And it is just so wrong because we are all people and we should all try to survive together. Because if you don't survive together, there is no future. And this is why I'm so dedicated and passionate to talk to the young people who don't have the experiences. And once I'm gone, like most of us, I'm here like a dinosaur, few of the kind now. But as long as I live, I would like to share it for people to learn how to understand each other. To love is already a bit more, but at least not to hate each other. And I shall be wearing this with such pride, you have no idea. I never expected this. And me, who can talk for Britain, I can't find the words how much it means to me. And thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That's good. We just pause for the national. She's next door. And of course, my one of my wishes before I kick the bucket, I would like to go back to Novi Sad. Have you not been back ever? I have been back straight after the war. Uh -huh. And when I found out that everybody was killed, mm -hmm. then it, it sort of gave mm -hmm. it. We went back to the big house because my grandfather was a county judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a very good.